So, ever since February 25th, the world has been going crazy about Elden Ring. And a lot of people would like to wonder why they're going crazy about Elden Ring. And speaking as a guy who you could, un you could accurately describe as being outright addicted to the game since I've been playing it since February 26th, and nothing fucking else, I can easily promise you the game is worth it. Why, exactly, though? Why is it the fact that it's this big game that almost everybody and their grandma's grandma has been talking about since said grandma's grandma has come up from the game in order... I mean, come up from the grave in order to play the damn thing? Well, it's honestly just another Dark Souls game. Okay, 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 that's that's a that's a stupid understatement to be honest, but here's the thing. It pretty much is the gameplay of all other Souls games in one. You know, from say the good jumping mechanics and equipping abilities of Sekiro to the main sword play, level design and whatnot from the three main Dark Souls games all the way to the boss difficulty in something like Bloodborne. And maybe, you know, some of the enemies' designs in some cases. Now, when I say that sort of a joke, it's not exactly me bashing the team of FromSoft utilizing assets in any way. Like, say, people could easily say, Ooh, Iron Giant Iron Golem spewing fire? Oh, wait, they're just the giants from Resident... I mean, from Dark Souls 1 through 3. Hmm. Again, I don't hate them for doing that. I don't. I swear on it. Because, given what they put in the game, I kind of understand why. Basically speaking, Elden Ring is FromSoft, the open world game. And to be honest, as an open world game, it is fantastically done. For one main reason. The Dark Souls gameplay complements excellently with an open world created specifically to be a living, breathing world. A world that is on the brink of death and yet still filled with vibrant life. What do I mean by that? Simple. It's an entire world that feels like it could exist without you, and yet feels like it still needs someone like you in order to enact anything in order to keep the world alive. And to be frank, they did pretty excellently. Because the open world itself feels confident. It feels like it could just point you in any direction, or at least hint to where you should go in order to deal with a certain boss that you're dealing with, and feel like it's going to lose no sleep at all if you miss something. It is that confident in gameplay. And to be honest, with the gameplay, how could you not want to explore the whole freaking game? Because, as most people know, and as I will more than happily note, Dark Souls, or rather, any sort of FromSoft game after the release of Demon Souls, is fucking hard. Anybody can notice that. But, it's fair. It's hard, but it is fair. As long as you're smart, and as long as you tend to know how to get yourself stronger, or even be smarter in how you approach these bosses then you're almost guaranteed a win as long as you also study the bosses. Or even if you just study the enemies in themselves. And Elden Ring takes this and says, you want to be stronger? Okay, explore the world. And to be honest, it very much does complement it that expertly. Not to mention the whole markers for where you die showing up on the compass that appears at the top of the screen is excellently done. And I know I said that, well, I do a full Let's Play series, but you can clearly see I'm not done yet. I would be done yet, but money. It's bitch. Especially with that 8% inflation, but let's not talk politics here, shall we? After all, I pride myself on trying to be as apolitical a channel as possible because my viewers don't come to me for that. No, they instead come to see me and my big fucking head talk about games or anime or what have you. So, you know, let's get back on Elden Ring. 
I actually quite like what they did with the dragons here. In fact, this is a bit of a strange hot take, but I think that they did the variety of dragons better here than they did in Skyrim. That's saying something. Mainly because I remember finding a whole bunch of dragons in Skyrim, a game I had not touched in months. And in a sense, they all felt the same, excluding some dead ones. You know, like undead dragons. They could breathe fire or they could do something else, like, say, breathe some sort of a noxious poison. In Elden Ring, however, it feels like there are some sort of a different fighting tactics for each dragon. For instance, of the three I've mainly taken down already, saving up all the hearts for Grail, well, technically four, you can easily tell that they put thought into what different types of dragons they wanted. For instance, Agheel fights different from Grail, fights different from Makar, fights different from... Uh, shit, what was, it? what was that one match dragon? It was the smallest of the bunch I fought thus far. It's the one that you're supposed to fight in order to get the key for Rhea Lucaria. Yeah, whatever. Point being is that they all fight somewhat differently, whether it's creating some sort of a huge lumbering amount of lava while they charge at you, whether they fly and burn up a bridge, or create magical spikes coming out of the ground. It is strangely done with how well they do their dragons. Then again, any fantasy never point out, oh, they're not dragons, they're wyverns, but who's going to ever point out that <laughs> except for uh, nerds like me? But, you know, if you ask me, I think Elden Ring is excellently done. And not to mention, I actually quite like a lot of the different additions they made to it. Like I said, you know the whole death mechanic with the uh, uh, humanity or, or human effigies or anything like that? They end up taking that and doing something somewhat new and something I actually do like with this game. What they end up doing is that they end up taking the great runes that you can get for bosses and utilizing the specialized rune arcs to activate them, to basically become human. It's similar in a mechanic to the, well, the, what the great runes offer when utilizing the rune arcs is a different boost to stats. Now, some of these are passive, like, say, the great rune of the unborn. But some, like my personally used Godric's Great Rune, ends up boosting all of your attributes by 5 when activated. And now that also comes up with something else. The open world aspect is still needed if you want to get the full experience of the game. Even if you're going for one of the most linear runs possible. Because you kind of need to explore if you want to activate the Great Runes. Do I call this a bad mechanic? Do I call this bad world building? It's the only game I've been playing since February 26th, so what the fuck do you think I'm gonna say? No, the game is freaking great with its open world mechanics. Because FromSoft have managed to intertwine the gameplay from all its other Souls games expertly into an open world game. I mean, hell, even the Ashes of War I absolutely love. I mean, like, right now, with the Great Sword plus 10 that I wield, Heavy Great Sword, of course, I happen to have Golden Vow, which increases my defense and attack when activated, equipped to it. And the different weapon customizations that you can do, as well as the different armor customizations that you can do, is absolutely insane. Like, seriously, I'm just wondering if somebody ended up taking the designers and the planners that were around Hidetaka Miyazaki and George R. R. Martin and just got them hopped up on some of the most insane amounts of crack and ended up going into Fallout to bring out Mentos in order to give it to them in order to create as many details as they could. Like, seriously. To just give you an idea as to how much I absolutely went insane over this game, just last night, the night before I made this video, I ended up going into the Siofra River and having to enter into a humongous cavern of giant ants, which I'm not particularly a fan of, personally. But when I ended up going through the entire cavern, what I m was met with before going into the boss fight against the Dragonkin soldier was absolutely telling to me. What I ended up seeing was an in-ground cavern with a night sky 
present in it. Whether, of course, I was just magic or some sort of firefly bullcrap that the game was playing, because the game seems to really like its fireflies. I don't care. It was freaking great. And what they ended up doing with the surrounding area. The dozens of denizens plastered into the ground, stuck in an image of horror like they were the Pompeii citizenry. To the giant leader, or whatever ruler they had, sitting on a throne, overlooking him as their, I mean, as their corpse looks down upon the citizenry in what appeared to be dismay. Everything just screamed that sort of beautiful work that you could only find with people who, and this is going to be shocking to you people, actually cared about the world they were designing. <gasps> I know, it's the most shocking freaking thing ever. People actually caring to tell a world by just showing it. Giving people something to derive information from and thus draw them in more. And what I found after that, by going deeper into the caverns, was absolutely fucking beautiful. The amount of caverns filled with these ancient ruins and what appeared to be a magically projected night sky with a, I guess, dawn aesthetic in the second one, to not only be there, but to also be big enough so that I can ride torrent through and easily find hunting game in. That is beautifully done. It's a world that can exist without you. And yet a world that cannot continue to exist without you. That is excellently done, if you ask me. And no, before you ask, I'm not getting a single cent from, from software. I am legitimately spewing these praises because I love the game this goddamn much. Although from soft, if you if you do want to hit me up, um, I am pretty much free for sponsorship, you know. Although hilariously enough, when it comes to speaking about money, the one thing I do regret about the game is that I didn't spend the extra twenty bucks in order to get the deluxe version in a pre-order. Yes, I regret not getting the somewhat lackluster pre-order because I feel like I spent way too little on this game. It is a fully realized world with fairly nice mechanics. Excellently done, and only maybe like one or two glitches I found. I mean, the only glitch I ended up finding that really hindered me heavily was when I was dealing with the Godskin Apostle at the bottom of the Kayla Tower. I mean, Kayla Tower basement, I mean. And that was mainly because the world itself was just sort of loading in. It could have just been me not being patient enough, but then again with a guy wielding a huge blade and black flame coming up behind me, I really didn't have the opportunity to be patient. Especially seeing as I wanted to beat the son of a bitch, get the Godslayer greatsword, get his Godskin robes, and the 90 goddamn thousand runes that all came with it. And before you guys ask... Up to now, I'm up to level 55, I have a Strength and Incantations build, I've taken out two of the major bosses, and I'm still not done! So yeah, when I end up making a Elden Ring series, I'm going to be able to do it until the day I die. And before you guys ask, when, when, and not if, when I do end up making my series, it will be an all-bosses run. <laughs> no, I'm not talking like uh, whatever bosses I can find. I mean everyone! All 157! Think on that! I mean, yeah, some of them are reposts, but 157 bosses! Jesus!